Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Go Local Live Business Monday. It's the small biz segment here at the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. I am Josh Fenton. This is Larry Dressler from Agcor out in the uh, the great white woods of uh, Cranston. Cranston, that's right. Yeah, one of the bigger agricultural areas. I know it's all forested over there. Yep. Uh, you run a pretty cool company called Agcor. That's correct. Uh, give us a little overview about what you guys are doing. So we're modern day farmers. We grow a superfood crop called spirulina, and that is a microalgae. Most people are familiar with seaweed, which is a macroalgae. This would be somewhat of a sister type product where it's a microalgae. In our superfood, we use it in both animal and human nutrition. And it's a really cool product. It's called, our crop is called spirulina. And spirulina has over 60% sustainable plant proteins. So for comparison reasons, you have steak is somewhere around 25 to 27% protein. You have peanut butter at 23, and we're more than double that. So I'm a sucker for anything that's called a superfood, right? Okay. Like I eat blackberries morning, noon, and night. Kind of right. anything that says superfood, I figure like I, I could use superfood. Okay. Uh, what defines a superfood? What's, wh what's the category and what does it mean to folks and why is it so critical? Why is there so much buzz about superfoods? Well, we're, we have entered a health conscious uh, era. Yep. Uh, in fact, the health and wellness uh, category has been the latest trillion dollar industry. So superfoods, it's funny, if you were to Google superfoods 2005, it's going to be apples and peaches and right, right. sands and stuff. Right. Now it's quinoa, chia seeds, spirulina, and so on. So Are blackberries still superfoods? Uh, yeah, yeah, they're still superfoods. Okay. We just have more <laughs> to the category. All right, good. More good, options. Good. Uh, but with spirulina, we have uh, more beta carotene than carrots. We have more iron than uh, spinach, more calcium than milk, and more antioxidants than blueberries. So those are all the things that make it a superfood. So wh when did you start the business? We started in 2013. And what was the brainchild to it? You were sitting in your kitchen yeah, and, yeah, and no. you <laughs> said, God, I could use some superfood. I bet everybody could use some superfood. Uh, it didn't necessarily go down that way. <laughs> uh, I grew up Th in that. Thus, that's why I'm not in the superfood <laughs> yeah, business, <laughs> right? Um, I was lucky enough, I grew up in a family business called Colfax that manufactured vegetable oils. They were located in Pawtucket, Rhode Island. We sold that in 2000. Uh, I worked for Corporate America for a couple of years and then started off on my own developing products for Dunkin' Donuts and Foxwoods, MGM. Right. Um, and then I basically, my background was in vegetable oil and I was looking for alternative crops. And I stumbled across some articles on algae. And algae is a fast growing crop. So I really kind of fell in love with it. And as I did more research in it, algae is made up of protein, carbohydrates, and lipids, which is kind of a fancy word for vegetable oil. So as I did my research, I kind of fell a little bit more in love with the protein side, raised money. In 2013, we started Agcor Technologies. Great. Uh, how many folks at the place? We're at seven. Seven people. And you've got distribution in about 100 120 stores 20 stores since November and, and who so products just hit became commercially available less than a year ago correct correct we just rolled this product out our uh, crunch lena which is a snack cluster and we rolled that out uh, November 1st of last year and we have it in uh, maple apple original and now we're working with um, uh, hemp derived CBD I'm not going to get into all the, yeah. uh, is it, and the hemp drive is, uh, is completely legal. Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, and what's the profile of the retailer that's taking you uh, right now? So again, you know, we're very big on the health conscious consumer. You have the millenniums really seem to be driving that industry, as well as, you know, it goes to all the uh, age groups. Um, but we're in the natural food stores. We're in some of the markets, everything from coffee houses to yoga studios. Um, right. And you know, going back to the millenniums, we have product at URI. Uh, we have our first order going into RISD this week. We're at Harvard. So we're really catering uh, to that health conscious consumer. That's great. And what's been the biggest challenge? Uh, you started in 13, took you a few years to get the product off the market. You're now hitting a little bit of a stride. You're in 120 stores. T talk about it, and, I t and I'll tell you why. You know, a lot of small business people say they watch the show and they pick up stuff from other entrepreneurs. Sure. And um, it, I think it's valuable to talk not only about the successes of being 120 stories, but what's, what are some of the frustrations? Uh, they're, they're there, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> every day. Yeah. Um, you know, early it was just learning how to uh, grow the spirulina. Most of it's grown closer to the equator. 
Uh, we grow it a completely unique way, uh, very high product integrity. Our competitors grow in outdoor man-made ponds, and we grow in eight-foot-tall tanks inside of greenhouses. So product integrity, that's great, but, you know, we were new to learning about Mother Nature, yeah. and <laughs> she can be difficult at times. Uh, we have a great grow crew uh, right now. Uh, we hire biologists from local universities, and they're doing a fantastic job. And this past summer was incredibly hot, which could be very damaging, and things went well. But as far as the crop, we seem to have mastered a lot of that. But it's uh, the standard uh, startup. Well, we're emerging small business, and it's usually funding. Yeah. And for us, uh, we're, at the product, we're at the point now where we have a great product line, and it's really uh, funds for marketing and sales. So I would say that that's it. If somebody comes along, I'll use, uh, you know, uh, if Jeff Bezos calls and says, I want you in every Whole Foods across the country, uh, d is that a, a curse? Um, uh, or is it a benefit? I mean, you've got to produce. Can you produce? What's the level of production you guys can yeah, hit so in your existing structure? We, we have capacity. I would have to tell him, you know, he'd have to give me a couple of weeks before okay. the uh, <laughs> before the choice rolls out. Right. Um, but uh, no, we, we have a capacity. Right now, uh, our limited factor is somewhat in our processing and packaging. So our farm right now is pretty good, but we do have plans in the next year or two to move up to uh, a couple of acres. Do you uh, package on site or do, do you ship it out? We do. Yeah. We, we actually have both capabilities, so we've done it both ways. Great. Uh, but more control if you do it in house. Yeah, that's great. And um, what do you see the future? I mean, you're at 120 stores. Do you see this growing? exponentially or do you want to kind of be a little bit cautious about you know not and uh, not hitting too big a stride you know there's always those famous stories about folks who get into Walmart and right. then they're gone right. two years later because they just can't absorb the uh, production requirements and delivery requirements yeah so I, I don't think that's necessarily uh, uh, an area for us when we're, we're not looking to be in every single supermarket we are looking to be in every single every single uh, natural food store um, and so short term, we're looking to go up and down both the east and west coast. There seems to be a little bit higher population, of course, more of your health conscious consumer. And then on the long term side, we definitely want to be nationwide and uh, certainly working with uh, major chains. And are you doing the big trade shows, the natural food show and those types of things and trying to spread the word uh, to the trade? Uh, and there's one in New York, there's one on the west coast. Right. Those are big shows, big players, big buyers, etc. So uh, went out to the show out in Anaheim in uh, March, uh, end of February, and that was fantastic. So I think we will probably uh, present there next year. Great. We're doing the farmer's markets, uh, and that's really a great opportunity for us to talk to the final consumer. We've done some test marketing of products with them. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the trade shows, for the most part, we've done very well with. So that's all a part of the whole sales and marketing. And you worked with Commerce. Correct. Uh, how did they help you, treat you, p pluses and minuses, what was that experience? Well, I'm happy to say no minuses. Uh, as far as pluses, they're extremely accommodating. I work with uh, Christine Smith, yep. uh, Kalina Harrington, and- uh, We've had Christine Smith right here. Oh, there you go. She's been in your spot. Uh, okay, yeah. very good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, extremely accommodating, and what I like is that you can just uh, you know, email them, give them a call, and they'll get right back to you, and they've been able to point me in the right direction if it wasn't a project that Rhode Island Commerce uh, works on. But we actually, uh, we've been involved in, I guess, two or three different types of uh, uh, projects with them. They have their innovation uh, voucher, yeah. where we've actually, uh, very exciting for us, we've been working on a product for about the last year. Um, can't really go into too much detail what the product is, uh, but I think they're going to help us with speed to market probably by about two years. Can we call it Project X? Yeah, there you Can go. Can we give it a good yeah. name like yeah, that? Absolutely, Great. that sounds good. Awesome. Um, uh, so that, that's a big help. And then we, uh, we're very supportive of the local universities. Yeah. So we have an innovation, uh, um, I'm sorry, innovation internship program. Yeah. And uh, we've... Uh, Is that with the URI? URI, we also work with uh, Roger Williams. Great. And, uh, a Roger Williams student can go all the way from Bristol all the way to Cranston, Rhode Island? Yeah, yeah. Jeez. We, we have one doing that now. Yeah, oh, my God. That, well, Rhode Island has come yeah. a long way, hasn't <laughs> yeah. it? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, uh, you know, you've talked a little bit about where you are now. What are the needs you're going to uh, have to develop to be able to become that it company you know uh, you know uh, all of us work through the ups and downs we, we as entrepreneurs we've all put our hands in our hands numerous times and go 
what the heck did were we yeah. ever thinking about launching this company? Seems like you're past the, oh my God. Right. Uh, and you're now into that next level of growth. What do you need to take it on and be, you know, a super regional company and right. a company with 100 employees and et cetera? Well, as I mentioned before, sales and marketing. Uh, one area that we've been a little weak on has been the social media. Yeah. And that's really, uh, you know, something that is a necessity. And our product uh, actually lends very well for that arena. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's an area that we are raising uh, some funds for right now. That's great. And how are you raising funds? Is it uh, in the private market? Are you looking for venture angel money or is this uh, through other forms of financing? Yeah, so right now for us, um, we're, we're very proud of what we have and we're really looking for strategic partners. Yeah. So we're not just looking for a VC that invests a, you know, in anything. We're looking for someone that can help propel our product to the next uh, step. That's great. And, uh, uh, you know, if somebody's looking to get into, there's a lot of cool startups in the in the in the food industry here in Rhode Island, it's right. it's, a, it's a growing growing segment. Uh, what's what are a couple pieces of suggestions that you'd make to folks who are thinking about jumping into the same proverbial pond? Uh, it takes a certain type of person. Yeah, <laughs> um, I would uh, definitely got to do your market study. Yeah, you got to make sure that there's a market for it, a customer for it. It's great if you have a great product, but only one or two people you know might want to consume it or what have you. Um, and I would go to uh, Rhode Island Commerce. They seem to be very accommodating uh, from a very small business to conceptual state to, you know, where we are. Great. So uh, I think that would be a good move. That's great. I really appreciate you coming out. Stay right here. We're going to take a, about a 30-second break for our next guest, another entrepreneur doing some interesting stuff, not in the food world, but in the energy world. We'll be right back in about 30 seconds. I'm Josh Fenton. This is the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. Be right back.
Welcome back, everybody, to Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center and Business Monday. It is the small biz segment. I am joined by Anthony Barrow. He is the guy, I mean the guy at PowerDex, uh, a really innovative Rhode Island company, kind of crosses between the marine industry and the energy industry. Talk a little bit about what you guys do. Yeah, so we're basically transforming the uh, marine industry uh, infrastructure, like marinas, for example. We're actually uh, performing building integrated solar into floating pontoons and docks at marinas, and we're basically converting those infrastructure into renewable energy power facilities and microgrids to help offset the costs of the marinas and also provide in situ electricity for boaters uh, in the open water. Great, uh, super cool idea. Talk about how it's going, when you launch. Let's start with when you launch. So we launched in, uh, uh, let's see, uh, uh, June uh, uh, last year out of uh, Newport. June of 17. Uh, June of 17. Yeah. Out of Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, follow that uh, in August, uh, we had a, um, uh, an advanced naval technology exercise exhibit uh, with uh, Naval Underwater w uh, Warfare Center. From there, we went into the Miami International Boat Show in February of this year, and uh, we walked away with the uh, North American manufacturers, uh, Marine Manufacturers Innovation of the Year Award. Nice. Uh, from there, so you've been hanging out in Newport and Miami. It's a brutal life as an entrepreneur. Someone has to do this. And then in June, <laughs> we took over Europe by storm. We went to the uh, Electric and Hybrid uh, uh, Marine World Expo in Amsterdam, and we were awarded the uh, Product Innovation of the Year Award. Uh, that was in June of this year. Back to uh, uh, the Naval War College and the ANTX uh, this last uh, uh, September. And uh, we're off to uh, Barcelona, Spain next Tuesday for the Barcelona Boat Show. And then uh, we're off to Greece uh, later part of the All right, summer. enough, enough, enough. <laughs> enough fun so travel. If you hold me five more minutes, <laughs> I got another uh, 15 minutes of uh, activity. Anthony, what's your background and what was the brainchild part? Where, uh, where did you come from? How did you come up with this? Yeah, so my background, I am a mechanical engineer, graduate from uh, Roger Williams University. I have an MBA degree. I started uh, my first, uh, my, my my second company, uh, E2 Solar Efficient Energy Solutions, nine-year-old renewable energy development firm, offices in Providence, Rhode Island, uh, uh, Florida, in Massachusetts. And uh, my lovely wife, uh, uh, two years ago, uh, reminded me that uh, she don't have a cold drink uh, every time we go to our sailboat in, on a mooring. And that's because I don't want to keep the batteries running uh, just to keep the uh, refrigerator going. So. I said, well, I have a renewable energy company. I've got to solve that. And that's how Power Could have bought a bag of ice, you know. That, that's how Power <laughs> Talk started. Trying to, Is that uh, really trying to keep your... Trying to convert uh, an old-style old uh, floating mooring into a floating uh, microgrid, able to generate power, store, and deliver power in situ in the mooring field. How many folks work with you... Uh, uh, at your firm. Yeah, so we're lucky. Uh, we have roughly uh, about uh, seven or eight uh, interns yep. uh, with us, uh, and then two founders. So uh, you know, close to close to ten. Great. And how have you seen sales? Uh, how are they developing? What's some of the challenges? What's some of the opportunities for you? Yeah. So the challenges that we have is uh, really resources because mm -hmm. we're growing faster than the resources that we have. Um, and uh, challenges is basically trying to uh, to uh, to catch up with all the all the requested demand that we have. <laughs> so uh, it is a good it is a good challenge to have. And, and and not to give away any company secrets, but you have to understand. Anthony got here about half an hour ago and nonstop on the phone dealing with the delivery of a product. Uh, <laughs> that needed to be somewhere at some point to satisfy a, a client? That's supposed to be in Barcelona, <laughs> Spain uh, by Friday. <laughs> if it doesn't work out by end of day, let me know. I'm happy to take it. I can take it on a plane. I don't know how big it is, but I'm We'll be flying to together <laughs> tomorrow morning uh, on, a, on a weird jet or something. <laughs> That'd be great. Um, you know, it's a wildly interesting world right now, right? We're seeing this explosion of solar and wind across uh, across the whole energy grids. We're seeing massive uh, implementation of technology that's making it less costly, more efficient. How do you keep up with the energy challenges of the solar panels to be able to make sure that you're getting the greatest efficiency 
uh, out, of, out of your product? Right now, the uh, you know technology is fantastic. Uh, you, we have uh, great efficiencies out of uh, modules like, for example, uh, SunPower. You know, one yeah. of the most efficient uh, modules right now. And uh, right now, uh, uh, if you are paying for electricity for somebody else, uh, you're really wasting your money. Yeah, you could be producing your own power um, from the sun. And what's the barrier for somebody else? Sort of, uh, do you have uh, do you have any patents? Is there anything proprietary? Is it a proprietary from a standpoint of uh, the technology or the application? Uh, yes, uh, we have we have uh, filed for patent, and we have a portfolio of roughly about six patents uh, for utility patents, and that's still being reviewed. Uh, and our uh, Blue Isles uh, brand is, is trademarked already, has been awarded, uh, and we have been out for about a year now. That's great. And uh, where are you getting your solar? panels from? Is that domestically produced? Is it Asian? Uh, where's that technology coming from? So for the U.S., uh, we're sourcing from SunPower domestically. Great. Uh, for our international markets, uh, we're finding that it's a lot better to actually source in-country. Yeah. So for Europe, we're sourcing in within Europe, and in Canada, we're sourcing within Canada. And if I own uh, a major maritime facility, and I'm th I hear about you, uh, what's the plus side for me to to adopt your technology and what's going to be the ROI? What's my investment cost? What's going to be my return on investment? Yeah, so you are challenged. Big challenge is because customers like myself are going to be driving to your marina in, yep. a, in our brand new electric cars in about a year or two. Right. We're going to park. We're going to get into our brand new Benetton Electric to go to Newport. Right. And then when we get down to Newport, hopefully we're going to find a power dock, Blue Isle Mooring, to plug in and recharge the batteries. And while over there, we're going to be thinking, what's charging my car at the marina? Yeah. Well, if you're not charging my car at the marina, I'm going to look for another marina. Mm -hmm. So customer retention is going to be your number one priority. Number two, the marine industry is transforming just like the uh, um, uh, uh, transportation industry mainland, where electric vehicles are, are taking over fossil fuel uh, uh, cars. Uh, the same is happening in the marine industry. Uh, more and more boaters are adopting uh, electric marine propulsion uh, and electric and hybrid. What's going to happen in very f short time over here is that the marinas are going to experience a, a, a rapid increase in demand of electricity, mm -hmm. both from the customers and the actual facility. And uh, if they're just uh, uh, providing uh, power from the, from the utility, they're going to see diminishing margins and lost profits. So they're better off uh, investing their infrastructure so they can become profitable with uh, renewable energy. And can your technology, uh, we were down in Newport this weekend, we took the ferry down, we came in by Palino's property, uh, Brown uh, uh, and Wharf area, and there's huge Browards hooked up there, you know, five, six of them there, 200 feet, they're, they're moving cities. Can this technology satisfy the energy needs of a of a, of a boat like that? Yes, uh, it really depends on the size of the infrastructure of the marina. If the marina have enough surf, uh, uh, surface area, mm -hmm. uh, we, can, uh, we can develop the, the size and we can augment also with energy storage as well. And is that, that's really going to be the next phase, right? I mean, everybody's got solar arrays. They've, they've figured out that technology. The technology is getting better. It's producing more energy. But the storage is really the profitability center of the next phase. Are you guys d knee deep into that? We're, we're very involved with the energy storage. Uh, right now, our Blue Isle mooring, not only can you use them as, as floating docks at the marina, but you can actually use them as, as, as floating dock moorings offshore, off the marina, off grid, in the middle of the harbor. So instead of docking one vessel, you'll be able to dock two vessels or four vessels. That's so great. if you're a municipality, you're increasing your, your, your revenue right there. That's great. Um, what's been the biggest challenge? What's been the biggest frustration? Uh, biggest frustration is really uh, uh, trying to educate the uh, you know the end customer and the and the public. They think that this is uh, the future uh, 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 state of, of a new technology, and is really you know the future is now. It's available now, and you could be saving money or making money. And it's all about educating our customer about what they could be experiencing. And uh, from uh, just constructing, hiring distributing, marketing, how's that been going? It's been doing great. Uh, we have been fortunate to uh, 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 confirm a strategic alliance uh, with one of the top worldwide marina builders, great. Uh, Bellingham Marine, and they are providing us with construction facilities in North Carolina. 
in Seattle, Washington, and also in Spain. Great. Uh, last thing, you worked with Commerce Corporation? Yes. Talk about that experience, the good, the bad, the ugly. Nothing bad, <laughs> all good. And, and I'm so wanting, you know, I try and tease some, everybody up to say, oh my God, they spilled coffee in my lap, what, whatever it is. It was bureaucratic, but I'm not getting that reaction. No, not at all. Uh, uh, I actually was experiencing a challenge in trying to uh, contact uh, folks at the uh, Naval Underwater Warfare Center and I placed a call to John uh, Rendo at Commerce Rhode Island. Yep. And John a good guy. A, a put me in contact right away uh, with a contact that we had uh, um, uh, sponsored by Commerce Rhode Island as well as uh, Newick. And that person was really able to get me into Newick and uh, show my technology, our capabilities. And in roughly about a couple of months, uh, here was a uh, a very young company uh, with no traction exhibiting uh, high technology uh, at the Advanced Naval Technology Exercise in Newport. W and that's a testament to the capability of Commerce Rhode Island. In addition to that, um, uh, we were successful in receiving an innovation voucher from Commerce Rhode Island that facilitated uh, research and development with Roger Williams University. That's great. And they able to uh, help us in our technology with wireless recharging and we were able to integrate uh, integrate that into our demonstration platform for the Navy. So that has been a real success. If people don't realize how, uh, how much brain power there is at Newark and how much there is at the Naval War College. Uh, Bob Whitcomb, who's one of our columnists, used to be the uh, editor of the editorial page over at the Providence Journal, was down at the Naval War College this past week and just, you know, meetings with the heads of secretaries of navies from different uh, uh, countries around the world. It's just uh, both those places are hubs of innovation, thinking, strategy that have global implications. We really have everything in Rhode Island to shine uh, not only as a state, but also to put uh, the United States in a very leading position in high technology. Um, and uh, one of our uh, advantages here in Rhode Island is our size. You know, we very easily in one day we can have meetings with uh, uh, poli you know, political uh, uh, supporters as well as uh, commerce uh, and banks and things like that. Uh, you could not achieve that in New York or Boston or any other city. So. Uh, if you're developing new products, uh, innovating new ideas, uh, I recommend you uh, check out uh, Rhode Island uh, so you can uh, get to market quick. Uh, Anthony, I want to thank you so much. Anthony from PowerDex, one of the most interesting companies that's emerging in the state. Just got a great combination of taking advantage of renewable energy uh, technology as well as our marine uh, heritage and expertise. Uh, I want to thank everybody for tuning in to Small Biz on Business Monday. I'll be back at 4 o'clock with Gary Sass, the money man, and Saul Kaplan from Business Innovation Factory. Back at 4. Thank you again. Appreciate you taking the time to come Thanks in. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks, everybody. See you at 4.